Hello everyone, it's the East Coast Economic Update for November the 16th, 2012. Some of the stuff that I wanted to share with you, some are going to be obvious, but more importantly we need to look over what's going on as the days move on. <clears throat> First of all, a notification that now 50 million people are under the poverty level. That's found at Blacklisted News. It will be listed. Um, it's interesting to note that 50 million people, uh, later on in the article, it states that it's 50 million families. So if you factor in that out of 350 million people in the United States that are legally here or um, at least paying taxes, whatever you want to call it, um, about 100 million of them are of working age. And 50 million of those are um, under the poverty line. Um, this, once again, throws in, in the face of what's going on with the BLS, with the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's wholesale lying. It, it, it continues to be wholesale lying. Uh, also, just recently, I just want to throw out that uh, exactly 12 hours after uh, British Petroleum BP settled um, its uh, Event Horizon uh, accident, which destroyed and continues to destroy a number of uh, hundreds of miles of uh, coasts in the Gulf, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, another explosion has just occurred. Uh, it just adds on to the point that people are uh, useless and corporations are the ones that need to be protected. Um, not that I'm in the habit of uh, quoting Noam Chomsky, who is um, a vehement socialist, but he's right. Uh, governments and corporations are only concerned with themselves, and uh, they will do everything, including murder and, and uh, destruction of the planet, for its benefit and bottom line. Um, with with all that's going on, and we see that more and more people, like our the gentlemen and ladies who are almost half of the working population of the United States, um, under the poverty line, and the other fifty percent uh, probably uh, you know barely holding on by their fingernails, we find it uh, dangerous over the long period of time, and this only adds to what I was saying last time. Which, state, which I stated that, um, that there is a progression towards the bottom. Remember I was talking about how we had already gone over the cliff. Jim Rogers had mentioned that. And we were just waiting for us to hit the ground. These are indications. These are markers uh, that we continue to see as far as um, the destruction of this economy and the destruction of this empire. Uh, one of the to add on again to what I had said a couple of days ago, um, we see now that of course what I stated earlier about the problem with Israel being hung out to dry, it's occurring. Um, you know everybody who I'm associated with kind of looks at the month of Kislev. If you don't follow the Jewish calendar, this is the new month. Um, this is the month in which um, we enter into. Uh, the time where um, where Hanukkah begins, where we turn back the Greeks and um, the Hanukkah candles lit for eight days uh, with only one night's worth of oil. <sighs> Pardon my frustration, but I'm a brutal realist. Um, the point of what's going on here has nothing to do with a senseless attack or reprisal against Hamas or anybody else. The issue is that, as I said in the last video, we have a continuation of where we're twisting the rails and destroying the infrastructure as we, as the Western uh, world's policemen, uh, move back and retreat to our shores here in the United States to end our empire. We're using people like the Palestinians and Israel and Egyptians and the Syrians um, to basically uh, afford our retreat. Now, if these same people were left alone and they were allowed to deal in businesses with the upcoming powers, the triumvirate, 
the Russians, the Chinese primarily, and the um, Indians, they would probably transition much better. And of course, it's a guess. I could be completely wrong. And I'm willing to say that I am wrong. But I'm a student of history, modern history. And every time somebody rallies for some apocalyptic, uh, messianic uh, reason, it ends horribly, historically speaking. I can quote Bar Kokhba, uh, the, the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, the Bar Kokhba revolt in 136 CE AD. Because good-intentioned people believed that they could recapture the glory days that were neither glorious nor accurate um, instead of doing the quintessential thing that every individual should be doing. Making peace with their neighbors, developing economic uh, ties. It doesn't matter. I mean, let's talk about history for a second. And I'm sorry this is turning into a rant, but... It's something I've been thinking about. Historically, Jewish people, post-destruction of the temple, post-Bar uh, Kokhba revolt, when Jews were completely dispersed out of Judea, and Judea was uh, announced to be Palestine. From the 900s to almost the 15th century, the 16th century, Jews and Muslims bettered each other and bettered the economy. They bettered science during a time where uh, in, in Christian areas it was completely backwards. Um, they, modern medicine, as you and I know it today, allopathic medicine, herbal medicine, was uh, perfected and uh, codified so people could go to medical school in a Muslim country. That's why we have great writers like Saladin and Maimonides who, though his writings uh, about Jewish law was, is great, one that is twice as large, the volumes, is his writings on medicine and diet and the fact that bloodletting kills the patient, not necessarily helps it by balancing its humors. Science was progressed. What we understand today as modern civilization that we take for granted were created by the Muslims and Jews, primarily, in Muslim countries. And yet, our short-term memory blocks out the fact that Islam is not our enemy. Neither is Christianity. But Islam is not our enemy. And for the majority of the time, Israel, the children of Israel, Dysporia, Dysporia were in peace with Islam. And while they were, and they had free economic movement and free economic and, and freedom of religion, it flourished into this magnificent empire that, you know, that, that it expanded all our knowledge that we have today. In the same way in the United States, we had a, we had a location where you could practice your religion as freely as you would like. And, I, and I'm not trying to you know, whitewash the fact of slavery and all this other stuff, but I want to point something out. That the largest growth moment, the largest progression towards modern society was during a time where the United States was never imperialistic. It was mercantilistic in the sense that it, it, it traded with people, uh, it, it, it it took technologies, it innovated those technologies in a place which was primarily religiously tolerant. Let's use that word. Uh, freedom of religion, even though it was in the Constitution, it really wasn't uh, activated until the 19th century, early 20th century. But there was a religious tolerance amongst different groups of people, and that technology and that innovation was allowed to flourish, just like it did during the Ottoman period, uh, and the and the and the Moorish period uh, in the in the in the tenth and to the uh, until 1491 when the Moors when the Ottoman Empire started to shrink. So what's the point, John? Right. Well, my point is this: 
we're doing the exact opposite. If we really look at history, look at our history, the American history, we look at Middle Eastern history. This is not what has expanded knowledge. It, this is the exact opposite of it. And some of my brethren would consider me an anti-Zionist or, uh, you know, uh, anti-Jewish. And I'm further from the truth. I'm a historian. And I believe that if Israel worked with its partners and did exactly what we were doing back in the Ottoman period, or at least most of those American Jews and those European Jews were operating from the paradigm from our, from our the United States of America's uh, industrial American standard of mercantilism, where, hey, you know, I, you know, we have this land, we're going to, you know, we're going to build economic bridges with each other, and we'll tolerate one another. This is not what's happening. And until everything is collapsed, until there's massive Armageddon because of this messianic fervor, Will we stop and go? Oh, you know, maybe maybe we should have um, maybe we should have gone to business together. And this is what I I'm saying. I I've had a feeling that this is what was occurring. This this excuse to go into Iran. You know, it's going to go right into Iran, and it's going to be a disaster. It's going to be a disaster for Israeli Jews and and Arabs and Middle East. It's going to be a boon for the corporations and for the United States Empire because they're shrinking. And it's going to be, um, and the only, one is, the only ones that are going to make money here, the only ones that are going to succeed are the corporations and the governments, not the people. Until we learn that and we continue to learn it and teach our children and our grandchildren this, we will be forever damned to repeat it. So, those are my thoughts. Peace to you. Good Shabbos. May cooler and wiser heads prevail. Is my only prayer. Till next time. Peace.